So sticking with NVIDIA here, NVIDIA's 10 for 1 stock split may seem exciting to investors who missed the boat and didn't want to buy a $1,000 stock, but does it merit a spot in your portfolio post-split? Here with more, we've got Thomas Martin, who's the Global Investments Senior Portfolio Manager. Great to have you here. Let's break this down a little bit further. Does it make it a little bit more attractive? Great. Well, thanks for um, having me on the show. Um, uh, as far as making the company more attractive, uh, no. I mean, like you just uh, did a very good job of explaining, nothing has changed economically for the company. Um, however, uh, when you're trying to make a precise position in a portfolio and make sure your exposure is where you want it, um, and I would say that for a company like NVIDIA that has um, had such a huge increase in value um, and really can kind of um, get to be an outsized position in your portfolio, uh, it's important to make sure you size that correctly so that you're taking the amount of risk that you want. You have the exposure to a, a good company with great prospects, um, but maybe you trim it back from time to time um, to make sure that it doesn't get too big in your portfolio and you have too much. Um, when the share price is a tenth of what it is, you can be more precise with that. And so I'm looking forward to the split to be able to just better manage my position and exposure. You know, we've been kind of having this mental joust of what's more important to the markets? Is it NVIDIA or is it the Fed? And, and, and Thomas, investors are increasingly pricing in a rate cut in September. The probability that's risen to about 58% from 45% just a week ago, the Fed continues to track the data to see whether or not inflation is moderating. And we've got that big jobs report tomorrow. What should investors be doing with their portfolios, given where the probability of cuts continues to move? Right. Well, um, I, I like that the uh, name of the show is Wealth and that when we're building wealth, um, we're really talking about um, exposures in a portfolio uh, for the times that should move fairly slowly. Um, we shouldn't be doing trading you know, every day or every week or changing where we are with regard to stocks or bonds or cash um, unless there's a big move. And, and really lately, other than the market moves upward um, for stocks um, and some fluctuations in interest rates, there haven't really been um, a lot of fundamental things that are different. We're in this a neutral zone uh, with regard to inflation, which is coming down, but sort of stalled out. We hope it's going to continue its downward path, but there's a fair amount of uncertainty about that. Um, uh, employment and unemployment have been, you know, more or less steady state um, uh, in this area, and we'll we'll get an, yet another data point on Friday. Um, but again, uh, it, there's nothing showing significant signs of weakening, um, although uh, there have been some signs that things aren't quite as strong as they used to be. Um, so that's in the neutral zone too. The consumer, um, again, mixed uh, with the, the maybe the lower end um, of the income spectrum having to make a little bit more decisions and be discretionary, uh, discretionary about what they're buying. Um, whereas at the higher end of the income or wealth spectrum, um, they're uh, you know speeding along and and uh, and creating a fair amount of demand. So. There's not a lot of reason to make changes um, in the portfolio uh, until something does change. And the moves from the Fed have been fairly well telegraphed. Um, you know, they've, they've said that they want to wait until inflation uh, numbers are better than they are, and they just they haven't been better. So that's why those expectations have gotten pushed back. Um, when those rate cuts do come, they uh, right now at least are, are, are fairly well anticipated in the market. So um, uh, whatever your positioning is for the risk that you have, if you liked it yesterday, you should like it today and, and mm. probably will like it going into uh, the latter half of this year. And so with inflation keeping above the Fed's 2% target, how can investors hedge that risk in their portfolios? Right. So uh, people are rightly worried about inflation over the long term. And uh, there's really two ways that are fairly uh, easy, I guess, um, to hedge that inflation. And the first is one people don't think about uh, very often uh, because it's 
it's just sort of standard investing. And that is to invest in good, profitable companies that are growing their earnings and their cash flow. And the reason that that works is that they are creating value um, and the value of what they're creating um, makes it um, you know, more valuable and therefore uh, outpaces just a general level of, of prices going up. Um, so you really can hedge inflation um, by being invested in, in businesses that, um, that are tapping new markets and growing in existing markets and growing their earnings. So that's one way to do it. Um, and, and most people are already there in, in a part of their portfolios. Um, the second way, it's fairly well known, is through inflation hedges um, in commodities and specifically um, in gold. Um, which has been for thousands of years um, a store of value and an inflation hedge. Um, and it's not a, an exact one-to-one, -one, um, but it is a way to put aside some money in your portfolio for something that has acted as a hedge for a long time.